right, so good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know we've got a wide new audience today, and so if you are joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And I am so thrilled you are joining us today to kick off our week because we are continuing our very favorite series here as an organization. So last year, we went on an epic cross-Canada virtual road trip in conjunction with the amazing team at Parks Canada and Canadian Geo graphic education and it went so well that we have brought it back this year and this marks our second stop on our journey across Canada. Just last week we were joined by the amazing team at the Port Royal National Historic Site in Kejimkujik National Park in Nova Scotia and now we've gone way west across most of the country to lovely Jasper to meet up with the team there to learn about a really cool creature today. Before we dive in with the specifics of today's broadcast I did want to note if you want to check out all our past sessions and all the ones to come over the coming months, check out our website slash road trip below on the bottom of the screen. And this year, in conjunction with the Canadian Geographic Educational Team, we have an amazing contest where you can win real prizes for taking part and learning more after these broadcasts. So check that out here. I'll make sure all our registered teachers have those links as well. Now, with our Parks Canada series, we've had the chance to introduce and meet some of the coolest, most amazing creatures on this planet. Today, we are going to dive in with bats. A lot of people are kind of skittish and scared of bats, but I happen to think that they are an extraordinary group of creatures, and I know our team at the Jasper National Park Office does too. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our educator extraordinaire, Marion, who's going to take us away on an epic bat journey. Marion, thank you so much for joining us, and let's dive in. Hi, Jesse. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, as everyone knows now, my name is Marion, and I'm so excited to be joining you today from Jasper National Park in Western Alberta. Jasper is one of seven mountain parks that are found throughout the Rockies and Columbia Mountains, and we can bring up the map to show you the map of Canada. And I will be giving a shout out to a few of the other mountain parks a little bit later on in the presentation. Although I myself am fairly new to Jasper, this place has always been part of traditional lands for Indigenous people. I respectfully acknowledge that Jasper National Park is loaded, located in Treaty 6 and 8, as well as the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Daniza, Nehiawak, Sehwapunk, Stony Nakoda, and Métis. I acknowledge the past, present, and future generations of these nations who continue to steward the land. Now let's zoom in a little bit closer so you get a better of idea of where, where we are situated. So Jasper National Park is in the Rocky Mountains. And it's up here at the top. And the other mountain parks in the Rockies and in the Columbia Mountains as well are right nearby, uh, all situated in Western Canada, right uh, near the borders between ja um, Alberta and British Columbia. Now, Jasper National Park has been uh, a national park for over 100 years, and it's home to some incredible wildlife. And people often want to come and see the animals like the bears and the wolves, the bighorn sheep, the elk and the deer. But I think that the smaller animals also deserve their turn in the spotlight. Like the bats, which is what we're talking about today. Bats are such amazing animals. They're really incredible. Now, does anybody know how many bat species there are in the world? Ooh. I'll give you a moment to think of a number. All right, so we've got a bunch of folks joining us on YouTube today, plus our StreamYard audience. If you guys want to type in the chat bar on the side of your screen, our StreamYard folks can type there, our YouTube folks can type in the chat bar on YouTube. What do we think in terms of how many bat species? Okay, we've got our first guest coming in, 100 plus, great guest, Ms. Varden's grade four group. Any other thoughts today? I have the feeling there might be quite a few bats out there. 126, very specific on YouTube. Thanks, guys. 34 we've got from Miss Quigley's class, 1,000 from Miss Lawson's class. These are some 20, very diverse, 872. <laughs> I, like I like the, the specificity. Two. Yeah, me too, very much. All right, so yeah, a wide range of answers everywhere from about 20 to 1,500 or so. Perfect. <laughs> well, let's see. There are over 1,400 species of bats worldwide. That's incredible. It's amazing how many different types of bats there are all over the world. There are 18 different types of bats in Canada, and nine of those can be found in Alberta. So there's an incredible range of bats that exist uh, in this country and all over the world. 
Here is a photo of a few of the different bats that can be found in Canada. And a neat little tidbit of information is that bats in Canada are all insectivores. So that means they eat bugs, which is not my idea of a good meal, but they seem to love it and they eat a lot. They're also echolocators, which means they use sound to help them navigate in the dark. This doesn't mean that they're blind. They can still see, but it does help them zoom in on those little tiny flying creatures that they like to hunt and eat and help them catch those bugs. Another really cool tidbit of information is that bats are also one of the longest living mammals for their size. So that's pretty incredible. The little brown bat, which is found all across Canada, lives an average of about 10 years in the wild, but some have made it to upwards of 30 years old. By comparison, a mouse in the wild only lives for about a year and a half, and they're the same size as a bat. That is pretty incredible. Scientists are still discovering all sorts of things about bats because they can be pretty hard to study. But that's also one of the exciting things about them. There is so much more to discover. However, that does also mean that sometimes people can be afraid or feel like they don't really like bats. And that's because they don't understand them or maybe don't know that much about them and have heard some scary things. People can be scared of things that we don't understand. It took me a little while to learn to appreciate how really fantastic bats are. But instead of telling you all about it, why don't I show you? So come along with me as we travel back just a little bit in time to when I first came to Jasper National Park and found out about the bats. All right, I'm going to bring this up and we'll dive in together. Hey everyone, I just thought I would start this vlog to tell you all about my adventures and my brand new job with Parks Canada. I'm so excited because Parks Canada does so much good work to share and protect our natural and cultural heritage all across Canada with so many people and also look after species at risk. Those are plants and animals that are at risk of disappearing if nothing is done to help them. What was that? It was coming from above me. I better ask my supervisor. Bats? Oh dear. You know I love animals, but bats are so strange, don't you think? their big ears and their funny looking noses. I don't know if I can share it in my office space with bats. Maybe I'll ask my friend in Banff to see if there's another opportunity over there. Hi, Marion, how are you? I'm good, Thomas, how are you? Great, thanks. How are you enjoying Jasper? Oh, it's beautiful, but I've got a little problem. There are bats here. Oh. Yeah. And I don't know if I can share my space with bats. So I thought I would call you and see if there's anything that I could try for a myth. Well, I'm sure you look into it, but you know that we have bats here too, right? In fact, we've been doing a little research into which species are here. We found a hibernaculum with little brown bats up along the Ice Kids Parkway. What's a hibernaculum? A hibernaculum is a place where bats go to hibernate over the winter. Bats hibernate? Oh yeah, some of them do. Some of them migrate to warmer places, but the little brown bat's one of the hibernators and it stays here and it, it lowers its body temperature and its heart rate. In fact, they can lower their heart rate from 200 beats per minute down to about 20 beats per minute or less during hibernation. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. I still might try my luck elsewhere. I'll call Nora in Waterton. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Take care, bye-bye. Nora, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I just thought I'd call to see if there's any job opportunities in Waterton Lakes. I thought you were working in Jasper. I am, but there are bats in the attic, and I'm okay with other animals, but I'm not too sure about the bats. That's too bad. I don't know if we have anything open. 
except for helping the researchers with their bat projects. Waterton has bats too? Yeah, lots of them are migratory, but we also have the little brown ones. Bats use the major waterways like highways and for hunting insects. And there are a lot of insects around. Certain bats also need a lot of space on the water for when they're thirsty. They come swooping down and drink while they're flying, filling up with tiny little water bottles. I knew bats were the only mammal that could truly fly, but I didn't know they drank in flight, too. Well, I'm still not too sure about them, so I might try another mountain park. Thank you so much. Take care. So bats eat and drink in flight. And they eat bugs, so I guess that means they're insectivores. I wonder how many bugs a bat can eat per night. Half their body weight in insects? And mothers with babies can eat up to 100% of their own weight? That's like if I ate over 10 10 pound bags of potatoes in a single night. I've got a stomachache just thinking about it. What was that? Mosquitoes? You like to eat mosquitoes? Well, there's no shortage of those in Alberta. Still, I'm not sure if it's enough to make me change my mind about the bats. Well, you don't have to take it personally, Miss Squeaky. And yes, fine, I'll do some more research. Hmm, so there are bats in Banff and Waterton. Maybe I'll try the Columbia Mountains in BC. I'll call up another friend of mine and see if there's anything happening in Mount Revelstoke and Glacier National Parks. Hi, Marion. No problem, Dee. It's nice to see you. I was wondering if you knew of any cool opportunities in Mount Revelstoke or Glacier National Parks, preferably away from any bats. Oh, you don't like bats? I mean, I have learned some pretty interesting things about them, but I'm not their biggest fan. Well, that's too bad. Uh, our parks have actually closed some of our caves to visitors to protect little brown bats and northern bats because they're actually a species at risk. I was just talking to my friends in Banff and Waterton, and they have little brown bats in their parks too. So if bats are everywhere, how can they be at risk? Well, that's a good question. And there are a few dangers to bats in Canada, but the biggest one is that they're threatened by a disease called white nose syndrome. It came over from Europe and it's been making its way west. Oh, I think I've heard of white nose syndrome. It's caused by a fungus that grows on bats' noses and wings, and it wakes them up during hibernation because it's really itchy and irritating. That's right, and it's hard for bats when they wake up during hibernation. They need to raise their heart rate and body temperature, and that burns a lot of fat. And I suppose in the winter, if they wake up too often, they use up too much of their energy, and there aren't enough bugs around to eat. Exactly. Unfortunately, they starve because there's not enough food around during the winter time. I had no idea that some bats were endangered. Thank you for letting me know. Well, my pleasure, and good luck. Miss Squeaky, did you know that? Well, why didn't you tell me that? Right. I suppose I wasn't really ready to listen to you, was I? It's so sad that little brown bats are endangered. I wonder if I can talk to one of our biologists in the park and learn a little bit more about what Parks Canada is doing to protect the bats. I'm here with one of our biologists in Jasper National Park. This is Nina, and she knows a lot about bats, so I thought I would ask her some questions. So Nina, I know that uh, bats in Alberta and in Canada are threatened by uh, white nose syndrome, and I was just wondering if there's anything that we're doing in Jasper to look after the bats or to protect the bats. Yeah, that's a great question. So in Jasper National Park specifically, we are focusing on monitoring. So we're trying to figure out what species of bats live in the park, their distribution, so where can we find them within the park. And we're also trying to locate hibernacula, which is the places bats hibernate during the winter time. In addition, we have regulations in place, so rules that say the general public can't enter bat caves just in case bats are present there to avoid disturbing them. Oh, wow. And, and how do you find out where the bats are? 
Well, that's also a good question. So bats are naturally pretty elusive. I mean, they're nocturnal, they're small, they fly. So the best way to keep track of them and to find them is to use acoustic monitors. So bats emit echolocation calls. So we have these little detectors that we set up throughout the park and we, they record. And then we'll take these recordings back to the lab and see what species we picked up. We also have this really cool thing called the Batmobile. That's what I call it. <laughs> and we attach a microphone to a car and we do these driving transects throughout the park and kind of the same idea. We want to see what bats are flying within the park. That's really cool. And can you always tell which bats are which just by listening to them? No, unfortunately not. There are several species of bats that call within the same frequency range, and those are really hard to tell apart. So we have this really cool project. It's called Bats and Bridges, and we do it with a collaborator. And he and his crew go around. They go from bridge to bridge, and they collect guano, which is bat poop. Poop? Oh, yeah. And bats love to use bridges for roosting and just kind of chilling throughout the night. And basically, he'll go, he'll collect this poop, and then send it to a lab. And then the lab can do this DNA analysis and see what species made that poop. <laughs> That's amazing that you can tell that from their poop. So as a non-scientist, is there anything that I can do to help the bats or help the people who are helping the bats? I think the most important thing you can do is let someone in the park or someone like a fish and wildlife officer know if you do see a bat, especially if you see a bat in distress. Don't touch it, but it helps us with our monitoring work. We can't be in a lot of places at once. So having people like you and people like you watching report any bat sightings to us really helps us get an idea of where the bats are found within the province. Oh, I wish I could see bats. That'd be really cool. Wouldn't it? And you can. Did you know in the Palisade Center where you work, there's a live bat cam? There's a, no way, there's a live bat cam. Oh, yeah. So I can actually see the bats. Yes. Paul didn't tell me about this. I'm going to go ask him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nina. No worries. Marion, so this is how it works. This is just a, a, a little camera right here, and we mount that in the attic. We know that there are bats in there. The camera's catching whatever's going on. This camera can see infrared light, and then sends a little signal through the modem into a computer, so we can watch bats live. We share the link so that students all around can watch bats in, in real time and, and see what's going on. So this is actually footage from the bat cam at the Palisade Center. That means it's just the mothers and the pups. And we can see there are two little pups there. And one of them's nursing. I guess it's hungry. Long-legged bats are one of a few species that will come and roost in, in human buildings. But like little brown bats, they hibernate elsewhere, usually in caves or mines. I think I see another bat playing peekaboo behind the beam there. Miss Squeaky, is that you? That's her. So the bats are usually here from May until September, and then they go off to find a place to hibernate over the winter. They're a lot more active than I thought they would be. They only go out for a few hours to hunt at night. Doesn't look like they know much about personal space either. Well, it was nice to meet you, little bats. I'm going to do more research to find out more about you. Have a good day. Awesome. <laughs> We're back with you, Mary, and we're going to learn what you learned. I'm so excited. <laughs> Absolutely. So... It's amazing how opinions can change if you just have a little bit more information. And I had the opportunity and the chance this past summer to participate in some volunteer work to actually go and participate in some bat counts. So trying to find out how many bats are roosting in some of the buildings around here and uh, learn a little bit more about the bats that are in Jasper National Park. So the bats that are actually roosting here at the Palisades 
who do roost here at the Palisades uh, aren't here currently. They are still in hibernation, but uh, the live bat cam will be going up uh, in the next month or so. So they usually start to come back around May. Uh, the best viewing is, uh, is a little bit later on, June, July in the summer. And uh, it really is just so special to be able to learn more about these incredible creatures and to get an appreciation of, of they, who they are as, as animals in the, in the ecological niche and what they can do for uh, people just all across Canada. They're so amazing. And if you want to help the bats as well, there's things that you can do, like share with your friends and family how cool they are and try and learn a little bit more. And as Nina said, you can report bat sightings and uh, maybe even build a bat box in uh, your yard or at your school. So that's all I have to say for right now. And thank you again so much. Thank you so much, Mary. And I can't believe you maintain that epic conversation with the bat like live in a broadcast. That is wild to me. Uh, we've just put on the chat bar, both in StreamYard and on YouTube, a link where you can learn all about the conservation work being done at Jasper and beyond for bats. Some really incredible stuff. And I hope you guys get the chance to see that. I'll also share with all our registered classes at the end. And I want to note as we're about to dive into Q&A in a minute that Nina is joining us too. Our bat expert from the video is uh, here with us. So we're going to dive in. If you have questions that are more detailed, we'll bring Nina in as a superstar guest expert to blow your mind and talk about some bats together. Uh, but Marion, thank you so much for such a fun presentation today, and I am excited to dive in. So before we go to Q&A, everyone, I want to note if you're on YouTube, please share those questions in the chat bar. We'll take as many as we can, and we have a ton of time today, which is awesome. Uh, but let's get underway with Ms. Lynch's class joining us in Oxnard, California. If you want to kick us off with a question, we'll go to you, and then Ms. Lawson, you're up next. Ms. Lynch, come on in. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'm just asking the students now if they have any questions. Oh, perfect. I can come back in a second once you've had the chance to chat with them and perfect. see if it comes back in. Uh, but let's head to our Miss Lawson 2 3s. We've got a kid right at the camera. Hi, Miss Lawson's class. Hello. Hello. Well, I was scared of bats before this, and I know a lot more. And I didn't know a lot more until now since I was scared of bats. Nice. And whenever I see a bat, I just hide in scaredness, fearing that they might suck out my blood. So, Marion, are bats in Canada likely to suck out our, our students' blood? I don't think so. Absolutely not. Uh, so, all of the bats in Canada, you don't have to you don't have to worry about that. Uh, bats in Canada only eat bugs. It is true that there are a few different bat species, uh, vampire bats, that do uh, drink blood. But uh, most of the time, they're, they actually go for birds uh, more than anything else. And I know that Nina's actually worked a little bit with vampire bats, so she might be able to give us a little bit more information. Ooh, Nina, how cool is that? Tell us yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I can definitely provide some more information. So there's only one species of vampire bat that actually eats mammal blood. And they actually really go for cows. Cows are easy targets. And it's like such a small little wound. The cows don't even notice it. It doesn't bother them. And like Marion said, the other species um, just eat bird blood. And mm -hmm. they really want to avoid humans because we're too fast. And we'll probably hurt them if they try to go after us. Yeah. I'm so glad we got the vampire bat thing really early on in the broadcast. And Ms. Lawson student, thanks so much for sharing that. It's really important to highlight when you are a little apprehensive around certain creatures. And hopefully today's broadcast has made you a little bit more likely to not run away when you see a bat, but just stay there and, and see what you can learn about it. They're really quite amazing creatures to watch fly around too. Uh, so thank you so much for, for sharing all that. And thanks, Nina, for the extra vampire bat surprise today. That was wonderful. All right, um, we're gonna head back to Ms. Lynch's class and Ms. Noble, you can put your hand out. We'll come to your class next, I promise. All our live classes, we're coming to you guys, I, I assure you. Ms. Lynch, back in California, take us away. Great. Okay, Valeria, go ahead, ask your question. Why do bats don't go out in the daytime? Ooh, why don't bats go out in the daytime? Thanks, Ms. Lynch's class. That is a very good question. Well, I've noticed that Bugs tend to be out more more often at night as well. So I think bats like to be out when their food is out. So some animals like to be out in the daytime. Some animals like to be out in, at the night uh, because that's what they're adapted to do. And bats are uh, adapted to be nocturnal. That means they come out at night. 
Perfect. All right. Um, let's head to Ms. Noble's class, Drayton, Ontario. Come on in, guys. Just unmute that microphone, and you are all good to go. Hello. Why do bats sleep upside down? Ooh. <laughs> That's a very good question. So bats are pretty special, and they are actually adapted to hang upside down. So you know how we on the monkey bars, when we hang, when we're hanging, our arms can get tired, our muscles get sore. But the bats, they're pretty special because when they clench on with their with their legs, uh, it's actually a relaxed position for them. And they have a special um, veins as well that makes it so, you know, when we're upside down, all the blood rushes to our head, but not for bats. So they actually are really specially adapted to be hanging upside down. And they need to drop a little bit. Most bats anyway need to drop a little bit to be able to fly. So uh, it's a really good, uh, good idea for them to be upside down and to be hanging out. Yeah. I love when we get this question. We, we get it in our sloth broadcast too. So it's just like when you're sitting on a couch, and you're sort of lounging back, maybe you're watching a movie, you don't need effort to do that. That's a relaxed position for you. So same deal with the bats hanging upside down. I'm really glad we got that question. Thanks, Ms. Noble's class. Yeah. All right, Rose Valley Elementary, let's go to Mr. Rokach's class in West Kelowna, BC. Come on in, guys. Hey. Hey, Basil. Yeah, we can wait. Okay, Basil, ask your question. <laughs> Are there any bats in Italy? Are there any bats in Italy? <laughs> Are there any bats in Italy? You know what? I've I've never had that question before. I'm pretty sure there are bats in Italy. Nina, are there bats in Italy? There are definitely bats in Italy. There are bats everywhere in the world except Antarctica. Okay. So there are bats in Italy. Yeah. Different than we have here, but there are still bats. So because they can fly, they can get to places that no other mammals can get to. So even remote islands in the middle of oceans have bats in them, to my knowledge, right? Like there's... Uh, really, literally, other than Antarctica, bats are everywhere. They're quite they, Yeah, bats can't fly across oceans, but they can fly shorter distances. So if there's like a landmass near an island, you'll find okay. bats on that island. Okay, sure. very cool. Our, our unexpected Italian question, thus proving again the point that kids will ask absolutely anything. Thank you so much, Hazel. Um, <laughs> thanks, Nina, for coming in for that one, too. Uh, live classes on YouTube. I will come to all you guys in a second. We're whipping through this question and answer for you. But let's head to Ms. Varden's grade four. Uh, if you guys have a question for us, you are good to go. Just unmute that mic and you're all set. Perfect. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, have question. Thank you, Jesse. We have a question about the bat box. You had mentioned that we could have you make a bat box or put it up to help. What is a bat box and how many bats can fit inside it? I think we have That's a good box. question. So oh, this, this is a bat box and it's uh, this is a, a pretty small one. So you wouldn't be able to fit too many bats in there. Although bats in Canada are quite small and they do like to roost all together to, to keep warm. And it's a thing that you can build and put up to provide alternate housing for bats. So if there are bats in a building and you don't necessarily want the bats to stay in the attic, uh, you can build a bat box and uh, find a good place to put it so that the bats can fly in. They grip onto this little bit of wood here so that there's a good place for them to land. And just on the inside, you can see that there's a little different compartment so they can move around if one compartment is too warm or too cold. So there's different spaces for the bats. And there are all sorts of different styles and you can look them up online as well. And I don't know if Nina has anything to add about bat boxes as well. Yeah, Nina, what? Yeah, there's different types of bat boxes. You can get like two and four chambered ones. So depending on the size you build, you can get up to 200 bats in one of the larger bat boxes. Wow. And they work. Yeah, the bats do like bat boxes and they will move in if you put it in the right place. That was one of my very next questions is that do you see that bats actually flock to these places, but that's fantastic to hear. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys at the Rocky Mountain Parks have a, a bat box info page but i know that bat conservation international is a really really fantastic one so if people do want to check out how to build a bat box that link below i put it in our youtube chat as well uh, has a great guide on how you can make one as your classroom or as a family at home so great question guys all right uh let's head to mr bocce's class live in toronto uh, and then after that we're going to take a few from our youtube friends before doing another round of q a so mr bocce's class come on in hey guys your butt. How did you first start liking bats? Oh, how did I first start liking bats? Yeah, like what, what made you love bats? Well, it was really 
having the opportunity to learn more about them and to actually see them. So I wasn't, you know, when you when you don't really know about something, and I, I, I exaggerated a little bit for the presentation about being scared of bats, but it's, you know, they're actually pretty cute. And they don't really want to be too near humans unless you've maybe got a big juicy moth hanging by you, but then they'll swoop right through. Uh, and so it was a lot of things that I'd heard that weren't necessarily true. And then realizing that bats aren't really dangerous to humans, they like to eat bugs for the most part, and actually being able to see them and watch them fly is incredible. The way that they fly is amazing because they don't have wings like birds do. They have wings kind of like this. Now, this is a replica. This isn't uh, a real bat uh, wing but it does show you what the inside of their wing looked like. So they're actually called chiroptera, which means hand wing. And you can see why. They look like they've got these giant hands inside their wings. And that allows them to fly uh, in really cool ways. And so that helped too, just to realize how amazing they are. I love that you have a bat wing on hand. Those are such great props. Thank you so much, Marion. All right, uh, let's head to some of our YouTube classes. We've got so many great questions pouring in. So, Miss Mustard's class, welcome back. Continuing on our road trip with us from last time last week, Sirat wants to know how many bat species are at risk. So, Nina, we might bring you in for this one as well. Do we know how many bat species are at risk in Canada or around the world? Who I, I can't answer the around the world one. I think it's quite a few. Um, in Canada, we have three species, I want to say, little brown bat, northern myotis, and I want to say the eastern red bat, but I could be lying. Um, <laughs> but those are the ones that are listed under the Species at Risk Act. Yeah. I'm really glad we spent a lot of time in today's presentation, Marian, talking about white nose syndrome. This is something that might be familiar to a lot of classes, and it's one of these pathogens that we've sort of unwittingly brought to a lot of places that they really have no business being in. It's had a really adverse impact on a lot of creatures. It doesn't mean that there's hope is lost. It means that there's a lot of work to be done, but I'm really glad we took the opportunity to highlight that. So thank you for that question, guys. It's nice to, to emphasize the fact that some of these species really are at risk and there's a lot that we can do together to, to help protect them. Awesome, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And scientists are do scientists are doing a lot of research and they're trying to find the best way to help protect those those three species. The mm -hmm. northern uh, bat, the the little brown, and uh, yes, I believe it's is it the tricolored bat, Nina? Oh, I'll bring her back in. Sorry, here we are. Tricolored. I was I was just about to fact check myself. Yes. <laughs> That's that. I'm so glad you mentioned that in our broadcast. There's inevitably like three Googlings because we get so many great questions from our audience. So thank you. Even even experts need to check it out sometimes. So I appreciate that. Um, let's head to some other questions from our YouTube friends. And then Miss Lynch, I'll come back to you in just a second. Uh, let's see. Oh, some other all-star classes today. Miss Quigley's class, they join us for, you guys, know, I swear, are in every broadcast that we have somewhere or other. So thank you so much, Miss Quigley's group. So how long do bats hibernate for? Do we have a an answer on that? Marion, I'll start with you. I, it depends on where the bats are and uh, what species uh, of bats uh, do the hibernating. And, and not all bats do hibernate. Some of them migrate. Um, so it's it really depends on where the bats are. It'll, they probably hibernate a little bit longer in colder climes. So when you get further north, and I'll bring Nina in as well if she has any extra information on that. Perfect. Amen. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. I would say in Canada, they kind of go into hibernation beginning of October and they'll start coming out at the end of April. So it's a, it's quite a chunk of the year that they are in hibernation. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that sort of as we're entering into April, we had some questions in the YouTube chat about when can I see the bat cam in the Palisade Center? And Marion, you mentioned this at the end. I did link that into the chat. May, it opens up. So check for it later, May. I will have the opportunity to see those amazing bats like we had the chance to today. That was so, so special. All right. And there is there is also a link on that page as well uh, that has some footage that we actually recorded. So even if the bats aren't necessarily back when you check the bat cam live, there is some footage that you can see on, uh, on that link as well. Fantastic. All right. Um, I'm going to head back to our live classes. We'll take two more from YouTube in a bit, but I do want to note for our YouTube friends, we are going to have a Padlet today. So if there are more questions you want to ask that don't get answered during the live broadcast, you can share them at that link on the bottom of the screen. And Marianne and Nina, the amazing team at Parks Canada, will have the chance to get to them in the coming two days. So do check that out if you don't get your questions answered. But let's head back to California, Miss Lynch's class. Come on in and take us away. Amen. 
Aiden? What are bats made of? What are bats made of, Marion? No pressure. <laughs> bats are made of the same stuff that we are, muscle and bone and a little bit more fur than humans do. And mm. they have special skin cells on their wings, too, which help them heal really quickly. So that's something new that I learned just recently. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So again, because a wing is so central to a bat's existence, if they tear their wing, it heals. It's one of the fastest healing tissues in the entire mammal world. Like it's really cool. Um, so very, very neat. Um, thanks, Ms. Lynch, a student. I like that question. Keep us on our toes, man. This has been a fun Q&A period today. Miss Lawson's class, if you guys want to come back in and Lethbridge, you are good to go. Hey, guys. Do you want to come ask your question? Do white, do white bats exist? White? Yeah, white bats exist. Absolutely. There is a species of bat called the white Honduran bat, and they are very cute. Yeah. Nina, any others that you know of in the whole world? Or is it just, I've seen the white Honduran bat. They're gorgeous. I'm going to try and find a picture in a minute for everybody, but. Yeah, one. that's the, I would say the whitest bat. It's a pure white. But my favorite thing about that bat too is they make tents out of leaves to roost in. So they'll take a giant leaf and they'll kind of nibble on it. So it fold, folds over into a tent and then they kind of cluster under there. I've, I have seen those bats in real life and they are adorable. <laughs> Cool, lucky you. Uh, White Hunter and Bat, check that out for some of our students. They're such a special, special creature. Uh, very cool, great question, guys. All right, Ms. Noble's class, if you guys are, are still in, just turn on your camera, I'll make sure you're good to go. I'll come to you in a second. Let's head to Rose Valley Elementary. If you guys have another question for us, come on in. Hey, guys. Oh, here we go, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Do all bats love bats? Do all bats love parks? Bugs, 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 bugs. <laughs> that's, that's a really good question. And actually not all bats eat bugs. So the bats in Canada do, they're insectivores, but there are also a whole bunch of different bats. And the wing that I had, this example, is actually from a, a flying fox or a fruit, a fruit bat. So there are some bats that eat fruit, some that only eat nectar, and then of course the vampire bats, those three species that actually do eat. Uh, drink blood. Sorry to leave you hanging there. Press the wrong button. Miss um, Noble's class, do let me know that you're there. I want to see your camera on before I come to you guys for Q&A. Uh, so Miss Varden, Mr. Bocci, I'll come to you guys in two quick seconds. Uh, let's take some from YouTube really quick. Miles and Mr. LeBrun's class wants to know if bats fly when they're pregnant. Maybe you could tell us more about baby bats and their moms. Marion. So they do, they do fly when they're pregnant. And then after the baby is born, I believe they also uh, will sometimes fly with the babies. Uh, Nina, please fact check me on that one. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> so you got a bat like with one baby or multiple babies? Like how is that working? Do they have multiple babies? No, bats usually only give birth to one baby. Okay. It's very, very uncommon for them to have more than one. And so when they're flying, they're like, flying to get places or are they actually feeding while they have a baby attached to their fur because that's wild to think about no they'll, they'll only fly with young to like get somewhere else normally they'll stay in maternity colonies so they'll leave the young behind to feed and then come back but they will fly with young and the young just grab on they're big too the young are big compared yeah. to the size of the mom I, I believe they're like a third of their mom's size when they're when they're born yeah it's <laughs> Yeah, it's big. <laughs> it, it chills all our blood as people to think about. Um, but I, I do encourage our classes, check it out. See a baby back compared to mom. We saw a little bit of that in the Palisade Center. Uh, but when they're born and they're on that fur, it's really, really neat to see how large they are comparatively. Great question, guys. All right, one more from YouTube, then we'll head to our, our live classes to wrap up. Uh, Miss Babbitt's class wants to know, are bats social? So we had the chance to see some bats rooting together. Are all bats social? Uh, how big are their colonies? Any light you can shed on this would be wonderful. Bats are incredibly social. They're very, very social animals. Um, it's they, They'll chitter at each other. They'll talk. There's uh, like really interesting social dynamics as well. And to add, they, they do like to hang out in groups. So the largest um, cave that we know of is in Texas. And that one houses at, at its peak 20 million Mexican free-tailed free bats. And they're all in this one place. 
and watching them emerge at night, which I have not seen, but I would love to see. It's just incredible to see 20 million bats exiting a cave. I would say so. So that is Bracken Cave, correct? Yes? That's correct, yeah. So people can check that out. You can see that footage. In fact, not just in, in this incredible cave, in the city of Austin. So for our students that are joining from big metropolitan centers, uh, millions of bats fly out from under a big bridge in Austin, Texas every, I think it's every night, but it's just one of the great animal motion in a, in a city in this planet and so that's a really special it's, it's so nice to have a creature that we can sort of have this intimate connection with in an urban environment uh, but if you get out to the wild certainly Nina I hope you get a chance to go to Bracken Cave it's what a special experience to see something that, that's that neat um, let's head to our live to last couple of classes to wrap up at the 40 minute mark I will note again if you have more questions the Padlet is your place to go share queries there we'd love to see your questions after this broadcast is done and I know you guys are all obsessed with that we've got more questions in the YouTube YouTube chat then we can possibly answer in one session which is awesome miss varden's class coming to you guys then mr bocce to wrap up in a second hey miss varden thanks for coming back to us we have so many questions uh for now i will ask in what are the bat predators in in, in the wild in their natural environment who do they need to look out for yeah that's a good question. So there's a there are a few different animals that can be predators for bats, and one is actually your your house cat. So it's a good idea to keep your cats indoors uh, because they can and will hunt bats, uh, raccoons as well, I believe. Um, Nina, do you have any more to add? Uh, honestly, birds of prey, magpies will eat anything. I've seen that. I've seen a magpie eat a bat. Not pretty. And other bats. There are bats that eat other bats as well. Yeah. So yeah, not but not too many because they are out at night. Um, they tend to avoid a lot of the like bird predators. I would never have guessed magpie. For our Alberta audience today, you'll be very familiar with magpies. We don't see them that much here where I am in Ontario, but they're uh, they're an interesting bird. Um, very cool. Okay. Um, by the way, for, for worth noting in terms of the flying animal world, if you watch hawks try to hunt bats, you'll get a real sense of how much longer hawks have had the ability to fly than bats have, because it's like uh, fish in a barrel. It's like grabbing apples out of a, a box. I mean, it's nothing for them to, to catch a bat on the wing. It's very, very cool to see in a hunting strategy. Mr. Bajay's class, come on back in, in Toronto to wrap us up. You are good to go. Hi, guys. Uh, so, uh, it's actually more of like a quiz question. Do, do, do bats live in, uh, wait, well, New Zealand. Do bats live in New Zealand? Yeah. What? With that question. I know the answer. <laughs> but we want to hear from you about bats in New Zealand. Okay, Mary and Nina, I'll bring you both in. Kiwi bats. Absolutely. Yes. And the cool thing about bats in New Zealand is because they don't have a lot of predators, a lot of them nest on the ground. It's so cool. And so honestly, for our student in Mr. Baji's class, watch New Zealand bats. And instead of like flying for their prey, you'll see them like walking along the undergrowth looking for things. And it's really weird because bats don't have like the body mechanics. They look like something out of a freaky movie, right? Like there's like this weird limb thing going up as they move they're just fantastic i'm so glad we got that question in. and thank you so much for sharing that and one uh, really cool little tidbit is that uh that australia and new zealand do this thing called uh, bird of the year so it's a poll that they share uh and you can vote for your for your favorite bird and i believe this year the bat won so <laughs> the bat was new zealand's favorite bird <laughs> very unscientific, but very fun. I like that very much. I think our bat-friendly audience will appreciate that, guys. Um, Mary and Nina, this has been so, so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us in, in such a fun program today. I want to note again, if you guys have more questions, check out that Padlet link. I'll make sure you all have that in the, our registered classes after this is done. Um, here, I'll bring us all to right in the middle. There we are. Um, and one other thing that you can all do, check out our road trip link. So if you want to see all the other amazing programs with the Parks Canada team, it is right there. In just a week, we are heading to do archaeology. Um, the Fortress of Lewisburg is going to be a ton of fun. And if you want to enter our contest to win real amazing prizes, check out the Canadian Geographic Education page around today's broadcast. So, so much to learn. Um, Mary and Nina, I'm going to bring you guys back in one last time together just to see, is there any last message you want to share with our students today about bats and how cool they are in the national parks uh, and around the world? Mary you can kick us off. <laughs> uh, well... Yeah. 
what I would like to do is to let you hear bats yourself. So I have a little bit of uh, monitoring equipment right here, and I would like to let the bats say hello. Fantastic. So what is that? What's, what's actually happening in that call? Uh, I believe that's a hunting call. So they're trying to, to zoom in on some insects. Yeah. So they make, so as bats fly, we talked about echolocation. Actually, I'm surprised you didn't get more questions on that today. So what is that process actually like, Nina? So the bats go out and how are they catching these insects? They're making these like really rapid calls. Why are they doing that? Yeah. So they're just emitting high frequency calls. Like we can't hear them. Um, and then they're listening to the echoes bouncing off their environment. And if they kind of find an insect or, if, you know, something they, that, that they can eat, they emit these calls more frequently just to kind of hone in and get a bit more detail. And then they just like swoop in, grab the insect and they have dinner. It's so wild. Nina, is there any last message you want to share about bats being our resident bat expert for the day? Oh man, bats are fascinating. And the more you read about them, the more you're going to want to learn. So don't be afraid to dive in and always just ask as many questions as you can and someone will be happy to answer them. We are going to put in all to all our registered classes that information about bat conservation, all the amazing work you guys are doing at Parks Canada. It's so, so special. Uh, we had the chance, Mary, and you highlighted that amazing bat call. A lot of students, you will live near places. Maybe it's a bat group, a local nature center, a park that has bat detectors that people are actually able to take out. So inquire with local nature centers. See if you can go out with a bat detector and listen for bats just like Marion showed us. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done in nature in my life. Um, I promise you guys will love it too. And if you need help bug me and i'll help find you guys local bat detectors uh if it exists near you so please do feel free to reach out at the exploring by the seat of your pants email now marion you are an old pro uh, at this nina it's your first time getting the chance to hear the epic ending of one of our programs and so miss lynch miss lawson rose valley elementary miss varden mr botch's class if you guys could get ready to join me in saying a big thank you and farewell to marion and nina yeah, you. you are all on right. come on in Thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye, guys.